beginning from December 17th until December 24th, the church chooses special readings to help us to focus on that event for which we are all waiting, the birth of Jesus. And that is why today a special reading is chosen which is the genealogy as narrated by the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 17. There are numerous points which Matthew makes in his genealogy, but I will choose three for our reflection today. By beginning with Abraham and ending with Jacob, in between mentioning David, Matthew is saying one thing very clearly, that Jesus comes from a line not of saints, but of sinners. David himself was a sinner, his son Solomon was a sinner, and many of those mentioned in the list of the ancestors of Jesus were sinners. Abraham, even though regarded as the father of faith, Abraham, even though regarded as the epitome of what it means to believe, also had weak moments, and so did all of the ancestors of Jesus. So Matthew is telling us by naming these ancestors that Jesus did not come from a lineage of absolutely holy people who always did God's will. Jesus came from a lineage of people who also faltered, who were also frail, who were also human and who sometimes let their humanity get the better of them. Sometimes they went astray, but they came back and sometimes they remained with God and were loyal to him. So Jesus is born through the saints, yes, but also people who were sinners as confirmed by the list which Matthew gives us. The second point which Matthew makes is the number 14. Matthew goes through great pains in his gospel to show that Jesus descended from David. The name David as it is written in Hebrew is written only with consonants which are D, W and D. Consonants had a number attached to them and D had the number 4, W had the number 6. If there are two Ds and you count them which are 8, 4 plus 4 and the W which is 6, you get 14. So Matthew goes through great pains to show that there are three generations of 14 ancestors until Jesus. Why 3 and why 14? 14 because 14 is the number of David's name. So Matthew wants to make very explicit that Jesus is indeed from the lineage of David. Why does Matthew go through such great pains to show that Jesus is son of David or from the lineage of David? Because the people at that time believed that the Messiah had to be a descendant of David. Obviously, Jesus is much, much greater than David, but also from his lineage. And so Matthew wanted that those who read his gospel recognize Jesus as that Messiah, as that son of David, who indeed is to come. The second reason why Matthew speaks about three and fourteen, there are fourteen generations, but three of fourteen is because three is regarded as the complete number. The Father, the Son and the Spirit regarded as the complete number. And so Matthew wants to show that in the birth of Jesus, there is completion now. Nothing more requires to be done. Matthew, unlike Luke, who does not mention a single woman in his genealogy, mentions four women who are Rahab, Ruth, Uriah's wife and Mary. 
And even though a number of interpretations have been offered as to why these women were chosen, all of them seem to have had something irregular about the union with their spouses. In the case of Rahab, in the case of Ruth, in the case of Uriah's wife, and in the case of Mary. Through this also Matthew is saying that Jesus is not born in a sinless world. Jesus is born in a sinful world. And despite being born in a sinful world, Jesus is able to live without sin, to live a sinless life, to live a life which inspires. Even as we read the genealogy of Matthew, many of the names might not mean very much to us. But let us take these three points for our reflection. And the first is that Jesus came from a lineage of sinners, yes, but also those who strove to be saints. With the coming of Jesus, perfection is reached. There are three groups of 14 generations. Nothing more needs to be said by God. Nothing more needs to be done by God. God has done all that God needs to do when he spoke in Jesus. Jesus is born by mention of the four women, not in a sinless world, but in a sinful world. Despite being born in that sinful world, he is able to live a life which is sinless. He is able to live a life which inspires. He is able to live a life where he invites us to love.